What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the JT Sports Podcast. I'm your host, JT. Wanted to come on here and give you guys a couple of my thoughts on some NFL Week 9 games that I got done watching today. We're going to be talking Cowboys, Eagles, Ravens, Seahawks, and Chiefs, Dolphins. Before we get into it, leave a like, subscribe to the channel. Remember that we're not just a YouTube channel. Every episode of the podcast is available in audio format on all podcasting platforms. Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get your podcast from, the JT Sports Podcast is available. If you enjoy this episode, give us a five-star review. We will greatly appreciate it. Share the podcast with your friends, family members, and acquaintances. And let's get into it. So, the Philadelphia Eagles beat the Dallas Cowboys in a very great game. And I said all week long leading up to this matchup that the Cowboys needed to win this game to prove that they were Super Bowl contenders. And the Cowboys played a really great game. But for some reason, this team just doesn't have that championship grit. You see, teams like the Kansas City Chiefs, the Philadelphia Eagles, find ways to win close games. The Dallas Cowboys, on the other hand, they seem to find ways just to lose close games. And the Cowboys had every opportunity to walk away with the W in this game, especially when you look at what occurred during their final offensive possession. You get the James Bradbury pass interference call, then you get a rough in the passer penalty on Hassan Reddick that puts you in really good scoring position. And then what goes wrong for Dallas? Oh, you get a false start penalty, right? And then Dak Prescott gets sacked, and that's pretty much the ball game for the Dallas Cowboys. Dak Prescott, he played an outstanding game. Hell, in my opinion, I felt like he outplayed Jalen Hurts. Outside of him stepping out of bounds on that two-point conversion, Dak Prescott played an outstanding game. But for some reason, the Cowboys just don't have that championship grit. And I think a large reason for them lacking that is because they don't have a great head coach. Mike McCarthy, he's good enough to build your team up, get you to the playoffs. But once you get to the postseason, that's about it. You see, the win in the playoffs, you need really great coaching. And that's something that the Dallas Cowboys have lacked for well over a decade. Even before Mike McCarthy became their head coach, They didn't have that with Jason Garrett, and they didn't have that with their previous head coach. You see, the Cowboys had a lot of chances to win this game. This literally was a game of inches, and it went the Philadelphia Eagles' way. You see, the Philadelphia Eagles, even though their defense gave up a couple of costly penalties at the end, they never flinched, they never folded, and they stayed composed and They came away with a big stop, and ultimately, it's the reason why they won this game. The Eagles are one of those teams that knows how to win close games, and they know how to beat championship caliber teams. The last time we saw the Cowboys, when they played against a Super Bowl caliber opponent, they got blown out on Sunday Night Football by the San Francisco 49ers, all right? And... Even when they beat the Chargers on Monday Night Football, that wasn't a greatly coached game by Mike McCarthy. Mike McCarthy is what's holding this team back. You can't point the finger at Dak Prescott. You can say that he may not be good enough to ever lead Dallas to the Super Bowl, but I believe with Dak Prescott being at least a top 15 quarterback at worst, you can win the championship with him. As long as you have great coaching in place, and that's not what the Cowboys have. Mike McCarthy, he's a solid coach. Hell, I'll even go as far to say he's a good coach. But when it comes to him being able to get the Cowboys over the top, he just isn't it. You need a coach who can make sure your team can execute in the big moments. And not just this season, but... For the last decade that I've been watching the NFL, I've never seen the Cowboys be able to be able to execute in the biggest moments of games. 
You see, this was a game that should have went in their favor. They should have been able to pull this win. Now, anytime you get the amount of penalties that you received during the final drive of this matchup, you should be able to take advantage of that. You see, you remember the vintage days of Tom Brady with the Patriots dynasty? You give Tom Brady some easy yards and you give up some costly penalties to the Patriots and Tom, they were going to make you pay every single time. That's what championship teams do. That's what it is when you have championship grit. You're able to capitalize off another team's misfortune and win the game because of it. But the Dallas Cowboys just don't have that ability. And yeah, there were a couple of calls that you should have gotten such as the holding penalty late on Michael Parsons. But at the end, none of that really matters because when you have the ball in your quarterback's hands with the opportunity to go ahead and seal the win, especially with Philadelphia having no timeouts, losing both James Bradbury and Darius Slade for at least a play or two during the final drive, you have to capitalize off that. And time after time, the Dallas Cowboys are notorious for not being able to finish games. They don't have that it factor that you need to be a Super Bowl contender. And my guy Juice Alert, make sure that you guys go ahead and subscribe to his channel. He didn't even view the Dallas Cowboys as legitimate Super Bowl contenders. And now I'm starting to understand why. Because we know Dallas is going to make it to the playoffs. But can you truthfully say, if you're a Cowboys fan, you trust Mike McCarthy to be able to coach a well enough game to even get you to the conference championship? You see, many Cowboy fans going into this season felt like this was the best opportunity they had to win the Super Bowl in years. You got Dan Quinn, the best defensive coordinator in the National Football League. You got outstanding defense that's loaded on all three phases. Defensive line, linebacker, and the secondary. Your offense, your offensive line. You know, your offensive line didn't have the greatest performance, but you were going up against a really good defensive line, but you still have talent there. You got talent that receiver. There is too much talent on this Dallas Cowboys team for them to consistently underperform every single season when it comes to being in a championship picture. And the big reason why they continue to underperform is because they simply don't have a good enough coach to get them to that peak level, which is winning the Super Bowl and hosting up that Lombardi trophy. And I think after this season, Jerry Jones should probably make a, make a change at the head coaching position. You know, there's been plenty of head coaches that have been able to get a team to the playoffs, but with them coming up short in the postseason, their organizations moved on from him. Good example, the Tempe Buccaneers, they moved on from Tony Dungy, they bring in John Gruden, and they win a Super Bowl. The Philadelphia Eagles, they moved on from Andy Reid. They bring in Doug Peterson. He wins them a Super Bowl. And then they move on from Doug Peterson, and they bring in Nick Sariani, and he gets them to the Super Bowl. You see, the Cowboys just haven't had good enough coaching for them to win the Super Bowl. And it shows because every time they need to execute in big moments, they just continuously always fall apart. The Eagles now have a three-game lead in this division. Not only that, but they also are the best team in the NFC. And to Philadelphia's credit, it seemed like people made this team out to be frauds. And with this win, I think it also continues to legitimize the Eagles as being the front runner to make it out of the NFC conference. You know, people were criticizing the coaching staff saying that they were going to struggle to replace Shane Steichen and Jonathan Gannon but these coordinators have done a fantastic job yeah Philadelphia may not be as good as a team this season as what they were last year but that's only because we hold this team to such a different standard and when you're held to a high standard people are going to criticize you when you don't seem to look like you're playing your best football but the Philadelphia Eagles they're the second best team in the NFL right now behind the Baltimore Ravens. The Cowboys, they're going to have another opportunity to play the Eagles again. It's going to be at home. 
And if they can't win that game, then it's further going to legitimize what I've been saying for the last couple of weeks about how the Dallas Cowboys are just a team that, you know, they look good on paper. They look like they could win it all. But when the games get played and the final whistle gets blown, they don't have the proper coaching or the ability to execute like a championship team is able to do. And that's why I say they don't have that championship it factor. They don't have that championship grit where they can be able to pull off a close win in the playoffs or they can be able to pull off a close win against a great team. This is the second great team that the Cowboys have lost to this season. And then every time I look back on these outcomes, my first instinct is to blame the coaching. You can't even put this loss on Dak Prescott. You can't even give him too much blame because he barred out. He outplayed Jalen Hurts. The coaching just isn't good enough for Dallas to be able to win it all this year. The Baltimore Ravens destroyed the Seattle Seahawks. And right now, the Ravens are the best team in the NFL. And I don't think anybody should want to play Baltimore right now. This team is looking like a well-oiled machine. They got the best defense in the league statistically. They got arguably the best offense in the NFL right now. This is a team that nobody should want to play. And even Tony Romo said that this is a team that pretty much should be in the forefront of the Super Bowl discussion. And if you're thinking about teams that have the ability to go on the road and beat Patrick Mahomes and Arrowhead, the Ravens most definitely have that. Lamar Jackson is putting together a great season. And I think he's performing better than what he did during his 2019 campaign when he won the NFL MVP that year. The Ravens against Seattle could do no wrong. They dominated Seattle on both sides of the football. Seattle couldn't even get anything going on their first couple of possessions. They didn't really get anything going until before halftime. And even then, that only resulted in three points. Nothing that Seattle did seemed to work. Meanwhile, for Baltimore, they continue to show why they deserve to be viewed as the best team in the NFL right now. You see, people are probably going to say it's still the Chiefs or it's the Philadelphia Eagles, and that's understandable. But this team, not only are they talented, but they also have shown the ability to annihilate teams that we perceive to be amongst the best in the NFL. This is the second good quality football team that the Ravens have annihilated like this. They just destroyed the Detroit Lions in similar fashion a couple of weeks ago. Lamar Jackson, with Todd Munkin at the helm at offensive coordinator, has helped elevate his game to a different level that we've never seen out of Lamar Jackson before. His passing has been criticized by a lot of haters out there, but there's no way You can watch Lamar Jackson play this year and not say that he hasn't looked like one of the best passers in the NFL this season. I mean, he's been effective in the quick, short, intermediate passing game. He's been accurate when it comes to making deep throws downfield. And not just that, but you couple that with his elite athleticism and how hard it is to stop this man when he decides to tuck and run. It truly makes Lamar Jackson a different animal, a different beast. And Mike McDonald is probably going to end up getting consideration to be a head coaching candidate by the time we reach the offseason. I think that John Harbaugh did a really good job at realizing when he needed to make changes, when the Ravens needed to pivot. The Ravens used to be a team that used to be all about physical play, running the football down your throat, playing the hard-nosed defense. Now this season, they've changed their identity. Now they want to spread you out. Now they want to throw the football at will against you. And even then, even though they are really effective passing the football, they also are really good throwing the football and running it as well. I mean, one thing about the Baltimore Ravens, you know, people always talk about how the Steelers are really good at finding talent and gems at the wide receiver position. Well, the Ravens do the same thing when it comes to running backs. Kid Mitchell was an undrafted rookie free agent out of Eastern Carolina, and he was going off in this game. 
And he has a similar skill set to Devon A-Chain. Really fast, really shifty. He's not a running back that you're going to run up the middle because he doesn't really have that kind of size to hold up, getting carries, running the football up the middle of a defense. But with his speed, he brings a different element to this Ravens offense that they kind of been lacking at the running back position. They've been looking to have explosive speedster at that running back position. And I think that Keaton Mitchell gives them that. He gives them that explosive home run threat. And for Seattle, I think that you need to start thinking about making some changes at the quarterback position. Geno Smith, do you need to bench him? I think that he probably should still be the starter unless you're really confident if you're Pete Carroll that Drew Locke can come in and give you quality quarterback play. The thing with Geno Smith is just that last year I felt was just a good feel-good story. And now he's starting to come back to reality. And although Seattle has a good enough team that you would think could carry Geno Smith with the talent that they have at wide receiver, their offensive line, their run game, and their defense, it still isn't enough. And you're probably going to need to draft your future at quarterback in the upcoming 2024 NFL draft because Geno Smith obviously isn't the long-term answer at the QB position. This defense got shredded. It's really disappointing how you thought Seattle was starting to turn a corner defensively, and then they go up against an unstoppable force and Lamar Jackson and this Ravens offense, and the Ravens are moving the football at will on this defense. It's like they were running routes against air at this point. It's like Seattle's defense might as well have not even showed up and suited up to play in this game because it didn't really make a difference if they didn't play. That's how effective and how dominant the Ravens offense looked in this game. And we saw this same situation occur when they beat the crap out of the Detroit Lions at home. The Ravens just are a truly well-oiled football team. They don't really have any big weaknesses outside of how their secondary at times can be prone to giving up a couple of big plays downfield. Outside of that, this is the most complete team in the NFL. They don't turn the football over that much. They don't have a lot of costly penalties. They got a good offensive line. They got great receivers. You got great quarterback play that you're getting out of Lamar Jackson. Your defense is performing as good as any other defense in the NFL right now. In my opinion, I think that the Ravens are probably going to end up winning the AFC. And I had a homeboy that, before the season even started, he put $1,000 on the Baltimore Ravens winning the Super Bowl. All the Ravens needed was to make a change at their offensive coordinator spot. Greg Roman, his time ran out. You know, the kind of style of offense he was running was too old school for the Ravens to be able to match up with some of the better defenses in the NFL. Now that you have a offensive play caller in Todd Munkin that knows how to run a more modern offense, three, four wide receiver sets, and also being able to run two tight end sets as well and get those guys involved. It's just elevated this Ravens offense to a different level. And this is the best offense that the Ravens have ever had in their whole entire franchise history. When the Ravens went to the Super Bowl and they defeated the 49ers nearly a decade ago, their identity was based on running the football. We're going to utilize our tight ends. They never were really a team that was known for having superstars and big names at the wide receiver position they had Anquan Bolden and Torrey Smith you know those guys were decent wide receivers but they were nothing compared to having Rashad Bateman, A. Flowers, Mark Andrews there's just so many weapons that you have to worry about anytime you go up against this Ravens defense and the only way that you can beat the Ravens is if they just end up having an off game they're probably going to end up having the number one seed in the AFC Kansas City, yeah, they keep finding out ways to eke out victories, but Kansas City just doesn't look as efficient as the Ravens have looked up to this point this season. And if the Ravens had a chance to play the Pittsburgh Steelers today, they probably would clobber Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has a great defense, but they have a below average offense at best. The only reason Lamar and company lost that game was because the receivers let them down. 
the only time I've noticed the Ravens lose is when they just weren't executing. But when everybody is doing their job and the receivers are catching the football, you don't have a lot of drops and they're not shooting themselves in the foot, the Ravens more times than not are going to win. The Ravens, to me, are the clear favorites to win it all this season. And I've been telling people, even before the season started, that the Ravens were going to be in the Super Bowl conversation. There were people saying, oh, JT, you're overrating Baltimore. I was like, dude, Todd Munkin is going to change a lot of things. This is the scariest team in the NFL right now. The Kansas City Chiefs beat the Dolphins. And, you know, if you want to know an easy way to get some free cash, just bet against the Miami Dolphins anytime they play up against a good team and a primetime matchup, and they're going to come through for you and put money in your pocket every single time. You know, Dolphins fans kept on saying prior to this game how they got cheated against the Philadelphia Eagles because the Eagles got no penalties called against them. They got outplayed by the Buffalo Bills, but they lost that game because they were missing a lot of their star players. Well, what's going to be your excuse for losing this game? Because you had Jalen Ramsey playing. You look pretty healthy to me. You didn't get screwed by the referees. At this point, you just have to admit, if you're a fan of Miami, that your team just isn't good against great teams. And there were Dolphins fans who I was going back and forth with on Instagram who were saying, well, at least we don't lose the bad teams like the Buffalo Bills losing to the Patriots and the Eagles losing to the Jets. Bruh, that doesn't fucking matter. You want to know why? Because when you get to the playoffs, guess what you're going to be playing? Great teams. And if you can't beat a good team in a regular season, what makes you think logically that you're going to be able to make a deep playoff run? The Buffalo Bills beat you by multiple possessions. It wasn't even close. Same thing with the Philadelphia Eagles. And although this game was really close, your defense played really well, your offense still didn't have a great game. To attack Valoa, I've yet to see him play in a big game against a great team where he just had a coming out party and he showed everybody why he was one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. This is a team that anytime the lights are bright, the moment just gets too big for them. Do you know that it's been over a year since the Miami Dolphins beat a team that finished with the record of above 500? The last time the Dolphins beat a team that had a winning record, it was the Detroit Lions during week eight of the 2022 season. And the Lions were one and six at that point. So if you want to be a little bit more technical, they probably haven't beaten a good team since early last season. You can say, well, the offensive line isn't great. Okay, that's a you problem. That's a personnel problem. Injuries, everybody's dealing with them. Everybody has to overcome egregious officiating. We know that the officiating in the NFL isn't great. You're not the only team that has to deal with these problems. You see, the Miami Dolphins are a team that they look really good on paper. If we have to give the Super Bowl to teams based on offseason hype, the Miami Dolphins probably would have won that thing two back-to-back -back years in a row. Yeah, they got the fastest team in the NFL, but why does it matter? You're not good up front. And if you can't win up front, especially having a terrible offensive line like the way they do, you're not going to be able to make it far in the playoffs. And what's funny to me is how Mike McDaniel, he tends to get away from running the football. The Miami Dolphins in the first half, they didn't run the football all that much. In the second half, when they finally realized, oh, hey, like, we got a good group of running backs. We can actually run the football. That's when this offense looked way more effective. I don't know why Mike McDaniel just has this air raid mentality when he just says, F it. We're just going to sling the football all over the field against you. You got to be able to play complimentary football. And that's something that this team doesn't do a good job at doing. Kansas City... This wasn't a perfect game from them. Patrick Mahomes looked really good out the gate. But in the second half, Vic Vangio's defense really put the hammer down on this offense. Especially on that fourth and one call, which was really idiotic. Because why the hell would you, instead of running the football, why would you try to throw it to Travis Kelsey trying to get cute? 
that could have costed Kansas City this game. And you got to give a lot of props for Vic Vanjo and company for putting all resources on making sure Travis Kelsey didn't beat them in this game. This Dolphins defense is rapidly improving. And I suspect it with this defense getting Jalen Ramsey back, getting more healthier. And this defense probably could be a bigger reason why they could maybe beat a good team or two in the postseason than what the offense does. Because the defense, I don't think this defense has let them down too much. The offense is what makes this team click. And it's cool to put 70 points on the Denver Broncos. But can you put 70 points on the Buffalo Bills? Can you put 70 points on the team that's, you know, having Super Bowl aspirations like you are? You see, that's the thing with the Miami Dolphins. They are a flashy team. They're like that nice Lamborghini. They're like a Tesla. But, you know, the problem with the Tesla is that it looks nice, but it has a lot of issues that comes with it that not too many people talk about. I like the Dolphins. I like Tua. I like Mike McDaniel. But this team has a big game problem. You can't win a Super Bowl if you can't beat good teams. It doesn't matter if you can beat bad teams. Because once you get to the postseason, everybody's just as good as you. And what's going to be the difference is the fact that everybody's either going to have a better coach than you or just as good as coaching as you. They're also going to be great quarterbacks. Do you really believe that Tua is good enough to outdo Joe Burrow, Lamar Jackson, Patrick Mahomes? Tua Tagovailoa sold this game for the Miami Dolphins. And I'm not even talking about that underthrow. I think that that's just a little bit of miscommunication. I'm talking about how, you know, he fumbled the final snap of this game, which gave the ball back to Kansas City. Let's talk about the fact that he overthrew Tyreek Hill seven to- several times in this game. The Dolphins don't play their best football when the lights are the brightest. Anytime the lights get too bright for Miami, they shrink up and they play small. Even when they beat the New England Patriots on Sunday Night Football earlier this year, they didn't win that game convincingly. They barely eked out that win. This just isn't a great team when it comes to playing in big games. The NFL should ban the Dolphins for even being able to be, you know, featured in a primetime matchup because they just crap the bid way too often. You can make all the excuses you want to if you're a Dolphins fan to cope. I got a Dolphins fan that came to me a couple of days ago and said, yeah, like, how do you like how I smacked you because of my analysis in the offseason? Him saying that the Dolphins are Super Bowl contenders and, you know, this and that, how much talent they have. And I was like, that's cool, but I'm still right about the Dolphins. Before the season, my biggest issue with the Dolphins is that they struggle in big games. And it's funny how I laid that out there. He laughed at it and he perceived to give out more excuses why they can't win big games. Oh, but the Bills lost to the Patriots. Oh, but the Eagles lost to the Jets. Who cares? You didn't beat them, so why are you trying to take credit for what another team did? The Dolphins are frauds. They're the biggest frauds in the NFL right now. They're the only team that people still feel have the ability to win it all, even though they haven't proven the ability to beat a great team. Until the Dolphins beat a good quality team, I don't want to hear no more talk about how this team is a dark horse to win it all. They're not. You got smacked by Buffalo. You got a better record than the Bills right now, and you still have one of the top records in this conference. But that's only because you've had the luxury on beating bad teams. You beat the Panthers. You beat the Giants. You put 70 on the Broncos. None of those teams that you've gotten wins over this year are playoff materials. As a matter of fact, all your wins have came against teams that have losing records. What's Miami's best win up to this point? Beating the Chargers where Brandon Staley, who Chargers fans call to be fired nearly every single week that they lose? The Kansas City Chiefs, You know, even though this team offensively isn't performing at the level that we've been accustomed to seeing out of Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, and Travis Kelsey over the last five years, this defense is all world. And they still find ways to get the offense going, but I don't know if Kansas City is even going to make it that far in the playoffs with the way this conference is shaping up. And there may be a strong possibility that 
Kansas City doesn't even get the one seed. As long as Lamar Jackson stays healthy, I think the Ravens are going to have the number one seed come playoff time. And Kansas City is going to have to, you know, go on the road to maybe make it to the Super Bowl this year. And they're definitely capable of making it back if they got to beat a team on the road. I'm never going to count out Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes. But Kansas City has never went into the postseason since the Mahomes era started where they didn't have home for the advantage. I think this is going to change this year, especially when you got other teams that have quarterbacks that are kind of in the same realm as Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, they're not on the same level. We know that it's pretty much Patrick Mahomes and everybody else. But the gap between Mahomes and the rest of the quarterbacks in this conference is now starting to close. Because now these other quarterbacks have just as much talent as what Patrick Mahomes has had in the past. And great head coaches, great offensive minds. Lamar has Todd Munkin, a star-studded group of pass catchers. Trevor Lawrence has Calvin Ridley, Zay Jones, Christian Kirk, Doug Peterson, Travis Etienne, Joe Burrow. We know what he's capable of doing. The AFC is just way too talented this year. For Kansas City to continue to make it back to the Super Bowl with the way that they've played this season offensively. This is it for this episode of the JT Sports Podcast. If you enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, check out the JT Sports Podcast. Remember that every episode that's uploaded on the YouTube channel is available in audio format on all podcasting platforms. Apple, Google, Spotify, Amazon, wherever you get your podcast from, the JT Sports Podcast is available. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, and I will see you guys shortly with another episode of the JT Sports Podcast.